hi there students welcome back again to another video lesson for grade 10 mathematics so after natin i-discuss yung uh, measures of position for ungrouped and ungrouped data so we're in diniscuss ko naman na yung ating lesson na nasusunod which is interpreting measures of uh, position so kung mapapansin nyo dun sa ating mga video lessons kung nanonood kayo so at the end of our solution, meron po tayong interpretation doon. Like for example, therefore, 25% of the student's score is less than or equal to uh, 50. Okay, those are what we call interpretation. So, para tayong nagko-conclude, depende, based dun sa ating nakuhang solution, ating nakuhang sagot. So, dito mas ma-enlighten -ma kayo kung paano mag-interpret ng measures of position. So, for our lesson objectives, first, we will recall measures of position. And then, we will interpret measures of position. So, yun po yung ating uh, lesson objectives. So, since nagre-recall tayo ng measures of position, mas maganda na magkaroon tayo ng review regarding measures of position. So, let us, let us answer the following questions. So first, which measures of position refers to the median score? Okay, so median, it means the middle score. So dun sa ating mga measures of position, tatlo dun ang magkakamuka ng value. So dun sa quartiles, deciles, and percentiles. Okay, so yung una sa ating quartile, that is Q sub 2 the middle quartile and then sa decile naman we have the pip decile that is d sub 5 and then sa ating percentile that is p sub 50 or the 50th percentile so ayan po yung ating mga sagot next the upper quartile is equivalent to what percentile okay so yung upper quartile natin q sub 3 okay that is 75% of the scores lower than Less than or equal to. So, equivalent siya sa anong percentile? Our answer is P sub 75 or the 75th percentile. Next, the fourth decile is equal to what percentile? Okay. So, in deciles, hinahati siya into 10 equal parts. And kada hati, uh, corresponds to 10%. So, dahil 4th decile, big sabihin, yung 4th decile equal siya sa percentile 40 or the 40th percentile. So, the 25th percentile is equal to what quartile? Okay. So, 25th percentile, yung P sub 25 equal daw siya sa Anong quartile? The answer is the lower quartile. Lower quartile or what we call Q sub 1. Yan, Q sub 1. Then finally, what percentage of the data is equal to 6th de the decile? The answer is 60%. So, after recalling uh, measures of position, so let's have problem number one. So, according to John, their mathematics test is so difficult. There were 400 test takers, including him. His score is 30 out of 40. His score belonged to the first quartile. Would you agree with John that the test is difficult? So, we have the following guide questions. So, para masagot natin yung tanong natin, ang tanong na, would you agree with John that the test is difficult? So, guide question number one. So, what percentage of tests did John answered correctly? If the passing was 75%, would he have passed the, the test? So, what percent? stage of the test did John answered correctly. So, since si John nakakuha siya ng 30 over 40, that is 
of the whole test. Okay, so yun ang nakuha niya, 30%, uh, 75%. So, more than half siya kung kasing 50%, ang score lang dapat niya is 20 over 40. So, since 30, kaya 75%. And then, would you have passed the test? The answer is yes. According to the question, if the passing is 75%, ayan, would he have would he have passed the test? The answer is yes. Pasadong pasado po siya. Next question. If the passing was 75%, about what percentage of test takers passed the test? About what percentage of the test takers failed the test? So yung mga nakapasa that is seventy five percent, and then yung mga failed naman, the answer is twenty five percent. Okay. Did the majority of the class pass or fail? Okay. So since yung percentage ng mga nakapasadon sa exam na tinake ni Jan is 75%, the answer is yes. Pass. Ayan. Mas marami ang nakapasa, ang percentage ng nakapasa kesa sa bumagsak. Now, to answer the question, would you agree with Jan that the test is difficult? The answer is no. Because the test was easy. Okay, kasi doon pa lang sa ano, uh, uh, position ng score ni Jan, first quartile na yon pasado na siya. Okay, so ibig sabihin, 25% lang ang bumagsak, ibig sabihin, 75% ang pumasa. So, kung itatanungin natin, ilan maaari doon sa 400 test takers ang pumasa, the answer, the answer is 300. Ang bumagsak naman is about 100. Okay, so ayan, as, ganyan po ang ating pag interpret ng ating uh, measure sa position. So, let's have problem number 2. So, Mr. Peña gave a summative test to his students in statistics. The students finished their test in 30 minutes. This time is the 2.5th decile of the allotted time. What does this mean? Okay, so... May mga students na nakatapos ng test within 30 minutes or less. And in 30 minutes na yon located siya sa 2.5 decile. So, anong ibig sabihin niyan? So, 25% of the students finish the test in 30 minutes or less. Okay, so ibig sabihin may mga students na maaaring nakapinish ng test within 20 minutes. Okay, so ano pa? Ang pwede rin nating isagot dyan na maaring yung test is easy lang, madali lang yung test, or konti lang yung items, kaya marami or 25% ng students lang, hindi naman siya marami actually, 25% ng students ay nakatapos ng 30 minutes or less. Okay, so kung 30 minutes, uh, 25% of the students finish the test in 30 minutes or less, big sabihin naman, there are 75% of the students who finish the test in uh, more than 30 minutes. Okay, so, yan po yung ating interpretation dyan. So, let's have problem number 3. So, Andre is an assistant manager in one big company in Quezon City. His salary is in the 8th decile. Should Andre be glad about his salary or not? Explain your answer. Okay, so since nag-work siya as an assistant manager in one big company, medyo mataas na rin ang kanyang position. So, since yung kanyang salary is nasa 8th decile, so ano ang mararamdaman dapat ni Andre? Should he be glad or not? The answer is, syempre, matutuwa siya. Glad siya dapat. Please, dapat siya dun sa kanyang salary. Kasi, mataas na yun eh. Nasa 8 decile na yun. Ibig sabihin, uh, 80% ang may mas mababang sahod kesa sa kanya. Okay, so, 
And then, kung 80% ang may mas mababang sahod sa kanya, equal or mas mababa sahod sa kanya, meron namang 20% ang mas mataas o kamukha ng sahod niya. So, siyempre, uh, nasa 8th decile lang siya, wala sa, sa 9th decile, kasi nga, ang position niya is assistant manager. So, kung manager siya, siyempre, mas mataas ang kanyang magiging sahod. Mas mataas din ang posisyon ng kanyang salary. Maaring hindi na sa 8th decile. Maaring 9th decile na siya kung halimbawa manager siya ng company. So, let's have na, uh, problem number 4. So, 35 scores in a mathematics summative test were recorded and 81 was the 50th percentile. Only one student got a score of 81. So, dito, uh, meron tayong 35 students, kaya nga 35 yung scores. So, isa lang daw ang student na nakakuha ng 81. Now, uh, ang gagawin natin dito is to identify the position of the student who got a score of 81. Okay, so paano natin yun gagawin? So, pakita muna natin yung ating mga guide questions. Ayan. So, how many students scored lower than 81, higher than 81? So, yung ating student na nakakuha ng 81, ang ano niya is 58th percentile. Yun ang kanyang uh, position dun sa 35 scores. So, percentile 50 is equal to 50 over 100 times N. So, N here is 35. Plus 1. So, that will become uh, 36. So, magiging 1 half times 36. And then, 1 half of 36 is 18. So, ibig sabihin, yung 81 na yon, yung student na nakakuha ng, nakakuha ng uh, 81 na score, so, is pang 18 dun sa uh, 1 to 35 na yon So, nasa pinakagit na siya. So, kung pang 18 siya, pinakagit na nga siya kasi nga 50th percentile. Let us answer question number 1. How many students scored lower than 81? So, ibig sabihin po, ang sagot po natin dito is 17. So, 17 ang mas mababa sa score na 81. And then, kung 17 yung uh, students na scored lower than 81, how many students scored higher than 81? So, the answer is also 17. So, 35 yung scores, yung students. So, ibig sabihin, since nasa gitna yun, yung 81 ay pang 18 siya, pareho ng bilang yung mababa at mas mataas dun sa kanyang score. So, I hope naging clear po tayo dito sa ating problem number 4. So, let's have problem number 5 or question number 5. So, in a 40-item test, the passing score is the third quartile. This means that, so, ayan, multiple choice yan. So, for letter A, the students should answer at most 20 items correctly to pass the test. The student should answer at most 30 items correctly to pass the test. The student should answer at least 20 items correctly to pass the test. Or letter D, the student should answer at least 30 items correctly to pass the test. Okay, so since yung total number of items sa test is 40 at yung passing score is on the third quartile, ibig sabihin 3 fourths ng 40 yung passing score dapat. Yung score na makuha para pumasa yung sudyante dun sa exam. And 3 fourths of 40 is 30. So, sa ating mga choices, ang sagot lang natin na may 30 dyan is letter B and letter D. Kaya lang, we have different keywords dyan, at most and at least. So, sa linear inequalities, ang, ang ibig sabihin ng at most and at least, at most, ibig sabihin less than or equal to. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, maaring kapantay ng 30 or mas mababa pa. Okay. So, basically, yung letter B, hindi po yun yung sagot. Kasi, kailangan nga, uh, 
yung score is mas mataas sa 30 or equal sa 30 para pumasa. So, so our answer is letter D. Kasi, yung at least, ibig sabihin niyan is greater than or equal to. Mahar, maaring 30 yung maging score, pasado na yon o maaring mas mataas pa, 31, 32, until, until such time na pwede rin naman siya maka-40, maka-perfect score. So, ayan. Nandaan natin pag at most, equal, less than or equal. Pag at least, greater than or equal to. So, our next video lesson, so, paulit-ulit na lang po yung ating uh, lesson. So, since na-discuss ko na rin sa inyo dun sa previous video lessons natin, naka-incorporate na dun, naka-integrate na yung solving problems involving measures of position since real-life problems naman yung ating mga data dun. So, for uh, further uh, understanding about uh, measures of position, I will... Uh, show you, I will teach you on how to solve problems. So, since solving problems yan, kasama din po yan syempre yung interpretation. So, hindi po nawawala yung interpretation dyan dun sa measures of position.